Well, happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Success Link with America Supermom. So I am excited to start this weekend off with you. I have a guest that I am getting to know a lot better. We are actually business partners. And sometimes you have to get on video and have an interview in order for you to carve out some time to be together. Uh, but I have Esperanza Smith, who is here with me today. And we're going to be diving into the topic of holistic healing, what that looks like, and whatever other questions that everybody has. So a little bit about me. I'm America's super mom, mother of 15 children. I'm just going to stop there because I lose people's attention at that point anyway. So everything else you can read in my bio, but I am excited to be here with you and share the stage with Esperanza. So she is going to be joining us right after these messages. Well, I hope you guys are ready to begin. I am excited to hear about holistic healing and what that all is about, because as a mother of 15 children, trying to keep myself together and my kids and everybody else, this is a topic that I definitely am looking forward to. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you Esperanza Smith. Hey. Hi. How are you, Michelle? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I loved your intro. So many beautiful topics there and people to jump on and get interested in, you know, ways to help one another. This is beautiful. Oh, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for having me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. And uh, before we get into our conversation, share a little bit about who you are and sure. what great things you are doing in the world. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I am an energy medicine practitioner. That's what I do in my private practice. I have been a holistic educator most of my life, so I taught in Waldorf education. And I'm also the founder and executive director of a nonprofit called Pure Esperanza. So we are all about bringing consciousness and well-being into the metaverse. So that's the, the way we're expanding in this ever-evolving organization that we have. And it's a global platform. And we're so excited to be able to share that with lots of individuals, even like here today, all the different people. Yeah, I love that. And, um, you know, you have me at metaverse. A lot of people are like, what the heck is that? And why would that even be... Right important. So you brought it up. So I'm just going to start there and say, sure, sure. you know, why, why think about the metaverse? You know, if people are talking about, we've got everything going on here within our own communities and locally, what mm -hmm. intrigues you about the metaverse? Yeah. Well, very interestingly enough, I have to say that I probably spent a good year mulling it over. And what I mean by that is that for a lot of people that are in holistic education, holistic healing, holistic medicine, that type of alternative way that we perceive ourselves as whole beings connected with the natural world, um, that sometimes might look contrary to being inside of the metaverse, which is technology. Mm -hmm. But as a Waldorf educator for you know a good portion of my life, um, we didn't we really advocate for electronics as being parts of the heights of the curriculum. There was so much more involved in terms of the human development and what we were focusing on with the children and the students. Um, that being said, 
you know, going back 20 years, let's say, colleagues, faculty members, community, all of that, we didn't have a lot of that around. In fact, my adult children didn't really grow up with a lot of electronics at all. But here we are 20 years forward, and there is not one of those individuals that I worked with that I was part of in their community that do not have computers and cell phones and technology today. In fact, the last school that I was an administrator for after I taught uh, was really converting everything into electronics, you know, and we had to have software and platforms and all those kinds of things to to be able to function and operate. So I had to really hold that as an idea of do I want to disconnect people? You know, what was happening by going into the metaverse? Was that going to work in that way? Mm -hmm. And um, then I thought about the importance on a couple of different levels. One, that I think that technology is obviously here to stay. It's going to continue to evolve. And how do we use that constructively, mm -hmm. responsibly? And two, that if we can reach future generations that are going to be much more integrated in technology than what we even know today, how do we do that in a way that can allow them to have experiences that anchor them and further connect them to their well-being, not just inside of a metaverse or a virtual reality, which they already are experiencing, but how do they bring that back and connect that in their own life? And that's the responsibility that we carry as far as the different community, global community collaborators that are coming together for Pure Esperanza. And we want to be able to do that, to really let that flow into the future generations where you know we might see the world a lot more um, heavily using technology, it already is. So how do we do this in a positive way, in a constructive way, in a way that really heightens the experience of well-being for everyone and that allows that um, sense of prevailing consciousness that's expanding through us to continue so that we really find um, what is best for our own journeys and what allows us to find all the ways we tap into our own inner resources and inner power to manifest the kind of lives that we really want to have. And I think at the core, we all have some of the same wants, you know, really basic of what we want in, in, in this experience of life. I love that. Now, so what do you think is the biggest misconception uh, that's out there about holistic? I mean, even just that mindset, because mm -hmm. so many people feel like, you know, I am not doing things right. So mm -hmm. i probably don't even have a chance to even enter into some holistic mindset because I've been doing it wrong for so long. Yeah. So what's the biggest myth that you want to dispel kind of like um, with well, that would, whole concept? Sure. Well, I would say that whether someone is unconscious or conscious of what holistic is, we are holistic beings. There's not like you get to be one or not be one. We are. What I mean by that is that we are body, mind, and soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're all of those things integrated. Mm -hmm. And that I think a lot of the evolution of our, you know, human race has been along different aspects. We can have different ways that we've focused on the body and not being so much connected to what is going on in the body in terms of physical, emotional, mental, that's just body. And then in the mind, you know, what those kinds of beliefs and constructs are that we have. Um, more and more integrative medicine is really combining those aspects. So we're getting to see that, you know, we have a physical condition, but that it's absolutely connected to something that's also behind it, which might be emotional or mental too. So it's not like we can separate them. These are all aspects of ourselves and our own being. So when we think of holistic healing, we're looking at how to look at ourselves as an integrative multidimensional being. And we can take that on lots of different levels because we can continue to expand on that in terms of how we relate in relationships with one another, how it intersects with every aspect of our life. And when I say relationships, whether it's your personal, with yourself, with your family, with your loved ones, with your business, with um, the world, how we view the world, and we begin to see that it's there is no separation of it. We're, it's all connected. So when we look at how to be whole and a whole well-being, it's just about being in that moment of where you are, what's drawing your awareness, and then finding that inner connection that we have with all those parts of ourself. So 
I think it does require um, for some people because everybody's on a different journey, you know, and we speak in different circles. And so those are all different kinds of people, you know, working in different ways. But I would say that for every one of us, we have ourselves, And just by able to be still and finding, carving out those moments to still ourselves mm -hmm. in, all, in the way that's unique to you, you know, because for someone it might be um, sitting down and meditating. For someone else, it might be stepping in nature. For someone else, it might be when they're in the shower. And, you know, when I think of you, God bless you with all those children. I only had four. But I think to myself, you know, sometimes going into the bathroom just to have a moment of that and shutting the door <laughs> was exactly. a moment for myself, you know, whatever that might be. Um, and I remember, you know, for, for myself, you know, I, I went through some different periods of time and I remember um, things like dancing, not um, for any other reason, but just to like listen to the music and allow myself to move. For other people, it's art. For other people, it's getting involved in a puzzle. For someone else, it's, you know, at that moment watching a movie. There is no right or wrong way. And I would say that's the thing that we would want to dispel the most. There isn't a right or wrong way. We're all experiencing this life in a multitude of ways and no one is better or above or worse or you know it's not one over the other it's just this experience that we're having and when we allow ourselves to be in this experience and to enter it more fully we actually tap into a consciousness within ourselves and you know we can couple that of course with lots of different tips you know that would help us to do that to get into the inner spaces for sure and i can share some of those with you too but i yeah. would that's I would love because well, you know what I'm uh, seeing is that you know let's say anybody has a consciousness of awareness at any state, mm -hmm. how do they once they have that awareness get these dimensions to be in unison? You know, I know for myself, you know, I went through depression and I was so much on autopilot just trying to make it through a day, but now that I have awareness about you know how I want to feel. And that really drives me when I wake up every day. I want to be happy. Now, everything that happens to me is not going to be a happy thing. There's going to be things that are outside of my control, but it's kind of like a filter that I use for being responsive rather than reactive. So for somebody who you first have that awareness and, you know, that accountability that you feel that you can take for your own well-being, what what are some steps that they can take to get well, all of these things in alignment? I, I love that. And I and I love the way you brought that really to the forefront because I think that is absolutely true. We we all are working in our own experience, in our own consciousness. And some very simple things that people can do. I would say first, it's so simple. And again, we can get so simple that people overlook that, you know, I don't know, they want it backed up by some kind of big research or science, you know, <laughs> kind of analysis behind it. But there really isn't that much involved. You know, when we tap into that stillness, we can just access things like breath, mm -hmm. simply breath. When we take a deep breath, and sometimes we do that unconsciously, you know, we might feel like something stressful, whether it's in the physical, emotional, mental, we go, you know, you take a deep breath, you know, or maybe we're not. And we all of a sudden discover I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I'm like constricted, you know, right. um, but those are very simple things that we can do by just bringing breath to it. In fact, in ancient wisdoms, you know, many different cultures practicing just breathing exercises. It was about the notion of, you know, is it like spirit that's the breath itself, you know, mm -hmm. so whether we believe that or we don't believe that, on a very physiological level, taking a deep breath is very important. And if we bring awareness to taking a deep breath, like I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to inhale deeply, deeply into my body. We can couple that with um, positive things like I'm breathing in love, you know, or I'm breathing in peace or I'm breathing in joy. And we can take that deeply into ourselves. And then we can even add to it um, maybe we want to hold that for just a few minutes, that inhale, and hold that in our imagination, in our visualization, whatever we want to hold that with, but that feeling like expanding of goodness inside of ourself. And then with that slow exhale, we release it, and then we hold that emptiness for a minute, and then we breathe in again. And we can do four sets of four. Let's say breathing four, 
holding for four, exhaling for four, and then holding again for four. We might do a couple of rounds of those, but that literally, scientifically, brings our parasympathetic system back kind of at a lower rate, our pulse, our heartbeat slows down. We can kind of regroup ourselves, realign ourselves, reset ourselves. That actually does reset the parasympathetic system. That's like, you know, medically known. So whether we're doing it from a real spiritual sense or we're doing it from a scientific sense, that doesn't matter either. The fact is that that's a very simple thing that any one of us can do. And it's absolutely going to assist us and whatever we have to do, you know, in your case, it might have been to set your mindset. In someone else's case, it might be to slow their busy mind down, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. That's a simple thing right there. Um, taking a glass of water. You can do the same thing by taking a glass of water. And I mean, we can get into some deeper aspects of, let's say I work energy medicine. So I'm working with, you know, things like um, the elements of earth, water, fire, and air, you know, but mm. drink water is a restorative thing. Our elements sitting in the sun. You know, we, those are, this is what I'm saying. We bypass the simplicity of things that are here for us. They're given to us. Like we were born into this world with these beautiful gifts all around us. When we, you know, how many of us have um, been on a swing or sat outside and felt the wind blow against us. We know what those feelings are like, or sitting with the window open on a summer night and feeling the breeze come through your home, right? Those are kind of tangible, but almost so subtle, these nuances. But when we bring awareness to these simplicities of how they restore us. And of course, we all know, I mean, you know, who doesn't think about, I want a vacation. Why? So they can have downtime. Why? Because their lives are so busy. But what if we could actually create all these kinds of moments in the course of life? So it's not like, mm -hmm. I got to get away to, to a vacation, you know, and then we have to work really hard so that we can get away. And then we come back and we work really hard so we can wait for the next time to get away again, you know. So mm -hmm. these are just ways that we bring downtime, me time, self time, presence time. I mean, we can call it all kinds of names and people have been calling it all kinds of names. The fact is that we all have these resources available to us and we can tap into them at any time. And I mean, we can have whole kinds of different conversations on different types of nutrients that you can bring into your body from the food, but mm -hmm. all of these living forces that are around us that we take in and absorb in our physical body, in our energetic body as well. I They're love that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and you know, I love the whole thing about the simplicity, you know, about how we can um, infuse these things in our day. So for somebody who may be overwhelmed, you know, we have my kids are out of school now. That was my <laughs> grandson that just kind of did a cameo shot here. Yeah. But, you know, the moms are like, oh, my gosh, I'm glad they're out of school. No more lunches, school. Yeah. Work. But you know, it's another stress. They're going to want to eat yeah. all the time. They want me to entertain them or they want to be entertained. So what are some ways that people can simply infuse some of these things? Um, you know, what would you recommend them get started with and even doing them with their children? Yeah. Because I know, you know, we can just say, hey, go off and go play your video game or get on your iPad and uh, let me do my work and you have your free time. But how can we start being more proactive with our children? Well, I think it's always about being present. You know, I mean, I mean, there's all those sayings out there that are about like the, the biggest way that you can gift your child is just to be there for them, you know, mm -hmm. but being there for them is so much more because most of us are in that busy space whatever it is. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, what we have to do and tasks that we have to attend to, things like that. But for our children to also allow us, or for our children to see us allowing ourselves to be present in the moment, meaning to be able to clear the mind. So by being with your children, allowing yourself, and I would say this is one of the greatest gifts our children can bring us, is to be with them in their play, not entertaining them, mm -hmm. being with them. Now you're a grandmother, I'm a grandmother. We know what that is because we see it from different eyes now. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for us to slip into that moment of just being in that moment with the child. And as parents, it's a little bit different of a role mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. But if we can allow these moments to slip in like a really beautiful weaving that we do so that we can really be present there with them. So maybe really about 
getting outside where you're not distracted by things mm. and being in that moment so that they experience you feeling the sun on you. They feel some joy that you experience by being still because these are the things that are really the resources that you're giving to your child. You know, we think about, you know, preparing them for school and college and whatever their lives might be and, you know, setting the tone for them. But these things like our imagination, mm -hmm. our connection to life all around us, a way that we relate to the world, these kinds of things are the things, how to take care of ourselves. And these kinds of things we model by our being, not by our doing, by our mm. being. And so these are the things that perhaps we don't give enough credence to, that mm -hmm. they really deserve a forefront for our children so that they can learn to develop these qualities for themselves, these relationships within themselves. So that's what I mean by the presence part. I think it's very important to be able to, to do those things. And I just want to share a quick story. When I was mm -hmm. in Waldorf teacher training, I was a grade school teacher, but there was a, a few years where I, I worked in the kindergarten. And when I was doing that early childhood training and doing that work inside the kindergarten, I was very well aware that, you know, it was a, something I could do, but it wasn't a natural ability. Like some of my uh, colleagues that were naturally inclined towards that. And what I mean by that is this, that when they would do the activities like play a game or bring the children together to prepare a snack and they would be uh, passing out uh, the, the food, the nuts or the fruit or whatever they were doing or to cutting different things to share with one another, there was a, uh, an actual training that they did to very centeredly approach each activity, cutting, chopping, sweeping, folding. And around these teachers, there was a grace. They even wore like, um, and I'm not saying for people to do this, I'm just sharing with you something that happened inside the Waldorf classroom and why it was so magical for children and why adults would come in all the time and be like, I want to have a place like this because it exuded a calmness, it exuded a peace, it exuded a joy and a purpose to what these adult models were doing as their teachers in the classroom. Mm. So this emanated from them. You know, we all know when we walk into the presence of someone who's calm, we feel it. Mm -hmm. Some, mm. Similar, same when we walk into some, you know, swarming whirlwind of ah, kind of chaos, right? And we mm -hmm. all been there. We've all been in that in ourselves, you know? So we know what that is. So one of the things that I just always admired about those colleagues of mine that continued, like some of them had that as a lifelong vocation, was mm -hmm. their ability to bring that every day. It was masterful. It was truly wow. masterful, you know, and it was such a blessing to, to get to witness that. And I had to work at that. Mm -hmm. you know, I find myself much easier being in the classroom because that had a different element. The children were a little older. They had a different, you know, way that we worked inside the classroom together. And it felt more conducive to the, how I was. But it doesn't mean that I didn't learn from that experience, too, because I had children of my own at that time. So I would go back home and incorporate these little things, just like all mm -hmm. of us. We hear things, we see things, we feel things, and we go, ah, I think I want to try a little bit of that myself, you know. But it, it usually works because it leaves an impression on us. So uh, yeah. that's it. I love that. And, you know, and so for somebody who's watching, you know, what are some of the things that they can do daily that can help them? Because I think, you know, sometimes when we hear something and we're just like, okay, I want that, you know, we just don't even know when to start. We just put in everything on our plate and then we give up because it's just kind of like too much, you know? So thinking about somebody who is starting out and they want to build, you know, yeah. that foundation, you know, what are some things? Because I think um, it's, there's work to it. And I think when we say that we want something, so often we think it's a magic pill. It's somebody else's blueprint that we can just follow and there's no work involved. So can you talk to us a little bit about how we get started, whether it's a routine, discipline, or whatever? Sure. Because sure. I think sometimes people have unrealistic expectations yeah. 
yeah. about where they're supposed to be with some of this stuff. Okay. Well, one of the things I would love to share is just a very simple thing that you can apply to yourself. And if you have children, certainly you can bring the children into this and even have it so that you're gearing it towards these times with your children. But it starts with ourself. Always it starts with ourself, right? Mm -hmm. So finding ways that we can incorporate some simple rhythms. And if at first it's only when you wake up, or maybe it's when you go to sleep, or maybe it's when you wake up and in the middle of the day and when you go to sleep, maybe you can add on a little bit at a time, but it, incorporating these little rhythms or these little ways that you might perceive as practices, other people perceive them as little rituals that they do, whatever it is, but they're just little self-care things that you can do for yourself. So whether it's that you get up and shower in the morning or sleep at night, but that you prepare to enter your day. You know, some people do that with meditation or prayer or you know, sitting down and doing breathing exercises, or maybe sitting down and doing yoga or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just taking your cup of coffee and taking a pause and looking out your window at this new day that's come upon you. But whatever you want to do, again, this isn't right or wrong. This is absolutely a time to invoke your creativity, mm -hmm. invoke that moment of like, if I only have two minutes, if I only have one minute, what am I going to do? If I'm rushed in the shower because I woke up late and I'm standing here under the stream of water, can I pause for just a minute and just take a deep breath inwardly? So you can prepare beautiful ways in the morning to get up mm -hmm. and to enter your day. And I would say meal times are a great time for this. So if you if you have meal times during these times of the day, to just to sit and pause. I have a beautiful friend, and she's involved actually in the Pure Esperanza community called Return to the Table. And her whole movement is about, you know, she's French, she's married to an Italian man. They spend a good amount of time in, in that part of the world during the mm -hmm. course of the year. But her whole premise is about sitting down at the table together and how beautiful it is to sit down together, to have a good nutritious meal. And it doesn't have to be a fancy meal. It can be a simple meal too, right? But just taking that time. One of the things that um, she talks about that I talked about in Waldorf education with, that's one of the things we learned as teachers when we did our snacks that I did at home with my children, it's the blessing. Just a pause moment. We used to have a little song that we would sing when my children were really little. You know, we would just have a little moment of give thanks, you know, and all those kinds of little things that you can do just to pause. And the same as you prepare to go to sleep, whether it's that you're taking, maybe on this particular night you warm a bath and maybe you just light a little candle and say a little blessing. But these are things that you can do for yourself mm -hmm. and that you can also do it with your children so easily, you know, but this is showing a real care and honor and reverence for you in your relationship with your life in relationship with the day, with the moment. So establishing these little rhythms that you can incorporate during your day. This is a heightened sense of well-being. It, it really allows that. And it, you know, in speaking to the blueprint thing, what I do for me might not be for you and you might not be for someone else. So it's unique. And this is where, again, um, you have a chance to play, to create something really simple and beautiful for yeah. you. You know, I, I love that whole thing about being creative and to play because, you know, what happens usually with a lot of people who are trying to change their situation for whatever, for whatever reason, they begin to look at themselves inward and say, what's wrong with me? Because this blueprint isn't working rather than exploring a way that they can create something of their own. So that's one of the things that I really wanted to highlight in what you said, because, you know, we get so comfortable following, you know, whatever everyone else is doing, this comparison that it is very awkward sometimes to have those moments when you realize that, hey, you know what, this direction that I'm headed just doesn't work for me. You know, we sometimes ignore the energy and all this and say, if it's working for everybody else, it should be working for me. And then we overwhelm ourselves and just get to burnout and a number of things. Uh, speaking from experience. <laughs> yeah, for real. For so real. I just say that I love that you mentioned that because we need to maybe even just change the question. Is this serving me? You know, um, how can I get this to serve me? What can I do so that we're a lot more proactive in following those blueprints? So this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Yeah. Um, and I could go on for hours, but I, I, I could absolutely too. I just hope that what people can take away is that it's a unique journey. 
and there isn't a right or a wrong. And every little thing you do with intention for yourself is absolutely spilling out to your family, to your loved ones, to your communities, everywhere. And that's really what it comes down to is that, you know, it's all interconnected and every little step we take, no matter how little it seems to us, it's still rippling out to the collective. So this is the beauty of it all. And this is absolutely important at this time of our own evolution that we can take that bit of um, authorship mm -hmm. into what our experience is. We can love ourselves. We can love the down times and the up times and find all these little ways in between so that we can move and flow and manage, not just manage, but flow, I feel is like the, the way we work with that energy in a, in a more positive way. That's really about our well-being, not with the neighbor and, you know, ours. I love that. So what is the best way for the audience to get a hold of you? The best way would be through uh, my website, esperanzasmith.com. And I can put that in the chat. And also um, to know more about the nonprofit organization, I think that that's a, a real good opportunity there as well. And that's at pureesperanza.org. Awesome. All right. So while she's getting that together on the chat, I want to thank um, Kimberly Lechnick and uh, Karen who have joined us uh, for this call. Uh, you know, it takes a village. And so I really appreciate uh, you guys coming on, showing your support. Uh, I'm going to create a quick little banner here for this. Thanks, uh, Raquel. Thank you so much. This is uh, the best way to um, get a hold of Esperanza. And uh, let's see, she has another one here that I'm going to add as well. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say EsperanzaSmith.com is about the energy medicine practitioner work that I do. And there's healing sessions there. They talk about all the different types of um, healing opportunities that are available for you, as well as holistic education and ways to reach me. I also am a writer and a speaker as well. And then purespedanza.org is about the organization and that global community and that launch that we're going to do into the metaverse in this coming, well, in 2023. Uh, but we're so excited because we know that it really offers an opportunity for many individuals to explore a diverse way to experience well being from six key components education, arts, healing, business, environment, social, global awareness. So we're going to be really excited to work in that realm. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to as, uh, joining one another uh here and in the metaverse <laughs> so thank absolutely. you absolutely <laughs> thank you so much lachelle appreciate you, it and you, blessings to everyone out there hope you're experiencing a beautiful day of well-being oh uh, well thank you so much and we also had another guest dominic dixie uh joined us as well he's actually uh a, one of our children's godfather so we want to give him a shout out uh, but I do encourage you guys that if you have any questions or you want to dive into this topic a little deeper uh, to reach out to Esperanza so that you can have that conversation. Uh, so much in my life has changed over, I mean, years, but just recently with this pandemic, just from conversations, I've been able to learn, grow, evolve so much because of just having a conversation asking questions, listening intently for the answers and really getting into this dialogue that's uh, taken me on a different path. So I encourage you guys to reach out and uh, connect with her. And again, we want to thank you all for watching us today. And if you have any questions and you're listening to this replay, then feel free to put them in the comments and we'll make sure that we get those answered for you. So again, Esperanza, thank you so much for giving us some very practical and simple things that we can uh, begin with uh, immediately in order for us to begin to walk in this holistic healing. Thank you so much, Lachelle. Thank you for serving in this way and to reach so many individuals out there. It's a wonderful thing. We are all connected. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Well, we thank you guys so much for supporting us on this show. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Bye for now.